Okay, so a perpendicular bisector are two lines that make 90 degrees at the intersection. It cuts the line in half, that's the bisector part, the perpendicular part is the 90 degree part, and it creates two congruent line segments. I'm going to put this in a little box. This is something we've been using, the bisector definition, where a bisector will cut things into two congruent parts. All right, and then equidistant means that you are the same distance from a location. So if you're in the classroom with me, you can see that Jake and, Jacob and I are equidistant from the center of that group. We're both the same <laughs> in the space in between the two groups. So equidistance means you're the same distance from the location. Okay, so let's talk about this perpendicular bisector theorem. So if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, so you guys, uh, let's just redraw this segment together. So let's draw our line segment. We'll call it AB. Boy, it seems like we've done that before, huh? AB. And we're, we have a perpendicular bisector. All the way down, he makes a 90 degree angle and he cuts AB in half. We'll call that center point C. The perpendicular bisector theorem says that if you have a point anywhere on the perpendicular bisector, like right here, it is going to be equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So that's A and B. So you take that point P and you go, oh, it is the same distance. So let's put our congruent mark on it. AP, I use C. Um, so what this is telling us is AP is also congruent to BP. The perpendicular bisector makes AC and BC congruent, and then um, the perpendicular bisector theorem says that at any point on our perpendicular bisector, is equidistant from A and B. Okay, let's talk over the converse. The converse says, if I know that two points are equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then I know it is on the perpendicular bisector. So it's the reverse. I have a segment, A and B, And I have a point P, and I know that P is the same distance from A to B, then I can say the line that goes through P and is perpendicular to AB is the perpendicular bisector. So it's the opposite. So this one is taking the perpendicular bisector grabbing that point and saying those line segments are equal. And then this one is saying line segments are equal. I must be on the perpendicular bisector. And a triangle is APB. Kind of triangle is APB. It's isosceles. APB up here is also isosceles. If two sides are equidistant, 
Then there you have an isosceles triangle. We're just bringing everything together here. Okay. Let's look. Let me erase this information. Okay. So if we look at example one in our diagram, MN is the perpendicular bisector. That's this guy. This guy is the perpendicular bisector of ST. So what does a perpendicular bisector create? Well, it creates a 90 degree angle and two congruent side line segments. So TN is going to be congruent to SN. And in fact, I'm not going to use the congruent mark. I'm just going to use N. So TN and SN are line segments that are equal. I can also say using the perpendicular bisector theorem, I can also say that TM is congruent to SM. Because M is on the perpendicular bisector. What other point is on the perpendicular bisector MN? What other last point is on the line MN? Grant? Q. Q. Okay, so let's look at what Q creates. So Q goes to T and it goes to S. So QS and QT also are equal line segments. And it, it helps that they give us 12 and 12. They tell us the good Okay. Explain why we know Q is on MN. So the distance <coughs> from Q to T and from Q to S is 12, comma, the same for both. So by the converse of perpendicular bisector theorem, where it says if we're equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then we are on that perpendicular bisector. So by the converse of perpendicular bisector theorem QT or Q has to be on the perpendicular bisector MN. which is angle bisector theorem. So if a point is on the bisector of an angle, so we're starting with the bisector of an angle, then the point is equidistant.
from the sides of the angle. And look, they have a little picture here for you. So they have the two, the, you are already given that it is a bisector. And the line that is perpendicular from the side of your angle where it meets the center, that is equidistant from its same compadre down here on the bottom, perpendicular from the side of our angle, those two meet and create two congruent segments. So if you see this wonky picture, it's pretty easy to identify. You can automatically say, oh yeah, PS is going to be congruent to RS. Our SP is, is equal to SR. And then the converse of that is true. If you know that you're equidistant, you're equidistant from the sides of the angle, then you know you are on the angle bisector. For example, if I have PQR and I got point S and he's rocking out in the middle there, he's perpendicular, he's connected by perpendicular segments, those segments are congruent, then you can say that QS is a bisector of our angle PQR. Okay. So let's apply that. <clears throat> Do you see how the shape is going to be super obvious? So you're going to get an angle, it's going to be cut in half, and it's going to create two equidistant lines. If my lines are equidistant, then I'm setting them equal to each other. To solve for x, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And then I'm going to look. Were they asking me to solve for x? So I'm going to take a look. It says, no, we want the length of RM. Okay. So RM is equal to 7X. So that is 7 times 5 or 35. All right. So this is number 32 from your homework. I just want you to make a note. It says AP equals BP, and that's different from AP line is congruent to AP line. The difference between congruent and equal, measures are equal. So if I measure it with, and get a distance out of that, that is an equal measure, same with angles. A shape, so whether it's a triangle or a line, the shape itself is called congruent. So when you're talking about measures, they're equal. So the angle measure, 60 degrees is equal to 60 degrees. Those are equal. Shapes, a right angle, those are congruent. So you need, I, I know it seems nitpicky, but you need um, that it makes a difference. And I don't want you guys to take a test and then get dot points. Um, so anyway, we take a look at this figure here. And we have PM congruent to AB. So they make a 90 degree angle. And PM bisect AB. And we put all that information underneath our gift. I'm going to pause for a moment. Okay. So reason number two, if AM is congruent to BM, because that is the definition of a bisector. 
creates two congruent lines. Cuts it right in half. So AM is congruent to BM. And it's already marked on our document, our little picture. Number three, angle PMB and angle PMA are right angles. Because if we make a, if we have a perpendicular bisector, then the angles created from that perpendicular bisector are going to be right angles. That's the definition of perpendicular lines. And just so that you guys can see, Perpendicular lines create right angles. I added that to that explanation. Then I also added PMB is congruent to PMA because right angles are congruent. They have the same measure, so they get to be congruent. So now that I have that PMB, that is, mm, is this angle up here? This angle is congruent to this angle, and this side is congruent to this side. So I've got a side and an angle, so I'm going to get another side, so I can use um, side angle side. So I'm going to say PM is congruent to PM, and that's reflexive, so that's this guy here. PM is congruent to PM, and when I have all those pieces, I have a side, an angle, and a side, so I can say triangle PMA is congruent to triangle PMB by side angle side. What always comes after triangle congruence? Yeah, CPCTC. So we know for sure we're going to have CPCTC. And then we're going to look at what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove AP is equal to BP. Well, we know. AP is congruent to BP because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. But this is where we don't want to show they're congruent, we want to show they're equal. So we just do one extra step. AP is equal to BP by like definition of congruence. I know it seems wackadoo to add that extra step, but you've got to look at what you're proving and make sure your end matches what you're proving. 